We've been talking about the, uh, the subject of forgiveness, and we began by just pointing out how great it is that God has allowed us to dwell in his house of grace through the blood of Jesus, and how that, uh, that forgiveness that we receive is truly just uh, a blessing and a marvel that we receive through the blood of Christ. However, there are some house rules when we abide in God's grace house, and one of the things that we observed is how important this process, this discovery of forgiveness is if we intend to keep dwelling in God's grace house. We have spent time, we have defined forgiveness, we have looked at the the biblical words and understood that uh, it is defined as, as this sending away, a pouring out, a releasing of things. We've examined why we need to forgive, we've looked at biblical reasons for us to forgive. We've also seen uh, what forgiveness isn't, some of the the things that we've attempted to do in lieu of practicing forgiveness. And we began uh, to seek ways in which uh, we can develop forgiveness as a positive tradition by which we live. And as we sought to do that, we began by mentioning that there's such diverse perspectives and multiple, multiple applications that forgiveness is truly better to view as a discovery that is presenting us with continual challenges. In other words, to to say, whew, I have now learned to forgive is is to not understand forgiveness because forgiveness is going to be a continual journey, a continual discovery, something that we always are going to have to work on. Obviously, it's one of the most challenging disciplines of of, of a, a disciple of Jesus. It means that we must then be prudent, that we must also work on applying biblical principles concerning the subject of forgiveness. And so the challenge is for us to, uh, to be ever diligent in this process. We shared some of the, the spectrum of forgiveness and how there are verses that talk about God and, and receiving God's forgiveness. There are verses that would have to do with forgiving ourselves. There are verses about forgiving other people, some uh, brothers and sisters, some enemies. There are verses that talk about how all three are intertwined. And so there, the, the scripture speaks... Of, of forgiveness on a multiple spectrum, and it's really important for us as we read and study what the Bible says about forgiveness to evaluate which kind and what the spectrum is when we read those various passages, and we attempted to, to outline some of that. Then we began to say, if we're going to make this thing our tradition, if we're going to, to step outside of the normal default results of our flesh and make a tradition of living this discipline of forgiveness, there's some things that we need to do. One of those is that we need to learn how to reframe events. And we talked about three new materials with which we can reframe. Understanding heart, valuing the offender, and actions of love. And that those three things can help us as we seek to reframe events. Last week, we also said once we have reframed the events, once we have, have put those, uh, those events in a new vein, in a new light, then we are perhaps ready to engage in another part of the discovery, and that is releasing. And we talked about that this is not just something we're we're not going to say, okay, time will heal all wounds, I'm just going to wait around and maybe this bitterness will go away. This is a purposeful planned process in which we engage in a, if you will, a literal process in our minds to send something away, to release it, to take it out of our heart to experience that freedom, releasing. Releasing now leaves room for something new to take its place. You know, the thing about you take something out, you better have something to put back in. And so we want to talk this morning about once we have released, once we have sent something away, what are we going to put back in? We're going to begin with this. We need to restructure the relationship restructure the relationship. Now, this is, again, yet another step on the process of discovering forgiveness. All of these things, as I've studied, they're just kind of intertwined with each other, and it may almost be that that one may connect with another, or it may be that we do one and then work our way toward another. It's all discovery. And so keep that in mind as we, as we share these things today that these may not come in a sequential order for, for us to, to get to forgiveness, but they probably are steps in, that we engage in in some form or another. This idea of restructuring 
relationship has nothing to do with the offender. This is totally about my addressing attitudes that I hold. I am going, now that I have released, I'm going to restructure this relationship. Not the relationship itself, the relationship as it exists in my heart, in my understanding, within me. Put another way, this is how we're going to figure out how you can live with the offender in the here and now. This is a restructure that says, okay, I have released, I I have let go of this hurt, I'm not going to hold on to this bitterness, but maybe the offender is still close. So what am I going to do on a day-to-day basis? How am I going to, to restructure for the here and now? That's what this discovery part of forgiveness is all about. This restructuring is for the offended, not for the offender, or for the relationship. You need new attitudes. You need the restructure. Just like when I'm trying to forgive, I need to release. I also need to restructure. How am I going to live in the here and now? Within this restructure, you assess and establish boundaries which exhibit forgiveness, but also promote your emotional healing. And I like a couple of words in that paragraph. One is this, you set boundaries. In other words, one of the ways that we're going to be able to live in the here and now with a liberated offense is to set new boundaries. But then we're also going to make sure that those boundaries exhibit in every sense of the way what forgiveness is. If those boundaries do not exhibit forgiveness, if there is some way in which those boundaries are controlled by my own flesh, by my desire, by my own bitterness, then they're of no, of no value. I have not discovered what restructuring is really about. And then the other thing is, what we're talking about here is our emotional health. We restructure for our own emotional health, not to influence or to force anyone else to do anything. These guidelines are free from bitterness and full of betterness. So I'm going to restructure. And what I'm going to restructure, there's not going to be any any residue of unforgiveness. But I'm going to restructure The variables in restructuring are just as multiple as in any of the other things we've talked about. You know, how all of this is going to apply in any given situation depends on a whole bunch of variables. And we're going to have to have the wisdom and pray for the wisdom to apply those in appropriate ways. Biblical restructuring is not used as a punishment, a control, or as a manipulation. You see, we have released that. I'm not saying, okay, I I can live with this person if they whatever. No, this still is, we're, we're making it about somebody else. We're making it about manipulation. We're making it about control. I'm going to restructure based upon me. And that needs to be the only thing that we're working on at this point in the forgiveness discovery. We are going to make this free from any attempt to force anything upon anybody else. It is an honest, forgiving Uh, It is honest, forgiving, and necessary boundaries set up to secure one's ability to continue their residence in God's grace house. In other words, if I just think, if I just process, once I have released something, okay, what am I going to do so that this doesn't jeopardize me living in God's grace house? That's restructuring. What am I going to do so that this thing doesn't keep me out of the grace of God and cause me to miss or to fall short of that grace? You know, one of the interesting things is once, once we gain this concept of restructuring, this is really what Jesus has reference to here in, in, in Luke when he says, So watch yourselves. If your brother sins, repent him. And if he repents, forgive him. If he sins against you seven times in a day and seven times comes back to you and says, I repent, forgive him. What Jesus is really saying there is not only do we figure out how to release things, but we figure out how to restructure 